So you've got yourself an S2 robot and you're uh, looking for something to scribble, huh? Well, you're in luck, because today we're going to show you how to draw your own name. Before getting started, we're going to have to grab a couple of things. A uh, Sharpie, some graph paper, poster board, and an S2 robot. Now, for full documentation, visit www.parallax.com go s2 and follow the link under the Downloads and Resources heading called Scribble Your Name with the S2. Let's get started. Now, in order to complete this activity, we're actually going to be programming in SPIN, the propeller microcontroller's native programming language. Now, one of the nice features of SPIN is that it's object-oriented, meaning that we can call different programs, or objects, in our code so we won't have to write everything from scratch. For this project, we'll use the s2.spin object written by Phil Pilgrim. Now, if you look through the code, you'll notice a series of blue blocks. Now, these blocks are known as methods, and we can call these methods in the program that we will write. For now, there are two methods that we'll focus on, move to and arc to. Move to will move the S2 robot to a specified coordinate location, and arc to will move the S2 robot to a specified coordinate location by a certain radius. This is where the graph paper comes in. Now we'll use it to map out our name and then assign coordinate locations to the major points in each letter. First, we'll need to write out our name on the paper. I found that keeping the letters about eight squares in height and about four in width worked out pretty well. Be sure to keep them evenly spaced too, since your robot will be drawing it eventually and you won't want it to look really crammed. Next, to find your origin and map out major coordinate locations on each letter of your name. These points will be at the endpoints of the letters or at points where an arc will begin, end, or change radius. Lastly, we'll need to calculate the radii of the arcs in our name. This can be accomplished by using a simple formula, where the radius equals the height of the arc divided by 2, plus the width squared divided by 8 times the height. For example, for the radius for the letter J, we've got a width of 4 and a height of 2. Subbing these values into our equation, we get an arc radius of 2. So now we're ready to start putting our values into code. If you take a look at the documentation for the move to and arc to methods, you'll notice that each unit of movement is about a half a millimeter. And if you kept your letter height at about eight squares like I did, that means each letter is only gonna be about four millimeters tall, which isn't very big. So what I did is I went ahead and I multiplied each coordinate location and each radius length by 30. And that'll make each letter almost five inches tall. Now in order to program your S2 robot in spin, you'll need to download an IDE to write the code in. You can do this by going to www.parallax.com propeller and clicking the Propeller Downloads link at the top of the page. Here you can find the Propeller Tool download for Windows PCs and Brad's Spin Tool for Linux and Mac machines. After installing the Propeller Tool, we'll need to download the s2.spin object. You can find this by going to www.parallax.com go s2 and clicking the default program link at the top of the page. The s2.spin object can be found in this zip file. Now this tutorial does assume that you're a little familiar with the spin programming language, specifically how to call objects and methods into your code. So if you've never programmed in spin before, or if you just get a little lost, there are links to some great getting started resources on the Scribble Your Name with the S2 Robot documentation page. We'll need to call some methods from the s2.spin object in addition to the move to and arc to methods. Uh, some important ones are the set speed sets the motor speed, and in this case I've set it to half of its maximum, which is a value of 7. Uh, and then we'll have to tell the S2 what coordinate location it is currently located at, which should be the very first coordinate location in the first letter of your name. And then if we put all of our movements between begin path and end path, it will make the S2 execute smooth connected movements. And now you're ready to start filling in coordinate location values using the move to and arc to methods. Now as you begin coding your letters, I recommend that you code each letter one at a time. Now this is because even though we've mapped every coordinate location on graph paper, it might not look quite right once it's translated into code. And this is perfectly okay. Just play around with it a bit until you're satisfied, and when you are, it should look a little something like this.
well, this doesn't look too shabby, if I do say so myself. And the best part is, is that we can apply this same graph paper technique and draw all types of shapes and pictures. Seriously, you're just limited by your imagination. Remember, for full documentation and source code, visit www.parallax.com go s2 and follow the link under the resources and downloads heading. And until next time, happy scribbling!